All right, hello everyone, and good morning. And peace of Christ to all of you. Uh, I just saw a video sent to me by one of you, and it was a guy, his name is Muhammad Hijab. Um, if you remember this guy, he is one of those who've been invited uh, by uh, the Titan TV to debate me, and he escaped, he ran away. Uh, in the Titan TV, he mentioned, I guess, uh, three names or four names. Uh, he mentioned uh, Muhammad Hijab, uh, Adna Rashid, uh, and uh, I think Ali Dawa, something like that. However, this is not really what important. For me, all of them, they are, like except Adna Rashid, he is educated. The rest is just a bunch of potatoes trying to make themselves like they are the one who knows Islam. However, the video sent to me, it was an interview in the D show uh, for the guy who they call him uh, Muhammad Hijab. In case you do not know how he looked like, you can click at the, uh, at the video underneath. Uh, there is an info for the whole interview with the Dean Show. All right? I'm not going to play the video so Muslims don't play in the game of uh, copyright. And in this, uh, in the in the in the beginning of this video, they quote this guy saying that everything in Islam is a copy of the Jews from A to Z. In other way, he said actually, everything in Islam you can find it in the Ju Judaism from A to Z. Now, is that really proving Islam to be true or proving Islam to be a false cult? Let us examine how Muhammad is copying from the Jews is he copying from his God which is the teaching of his God or it is Muhammad is copying the Jews uh, always when Muslim they speak about their God and their prophet they try to present him to us that he is a person who receive a message from God and when we ask them what is the proof of that they have no proof. Even the Quran have no proof. Even the Quran said to Muhammad, if you don't believe, go and ask the Christians and the Jews. Uh, let us see together examples of how Muhammad established his religion. <clears throat> All of us, we remember that the Muslims, they pray five times a day. But where, according to Muhammad, where he get this prayer from? As I understand, I believe the more accurate that Muhammad, he got that from the Sabia. But yet Muhammad, he claimed that he took that from the Jews. How we get this answer? Let us go and see together where we can find this. This is this is a hadith can be found in many uh, all the hadith we will show you in front of us our hadith can be found in like uh, in, in many places in Islamic resource and none of them is a weak hadith not even one not even one all the hadith I will show you I put them already ready so we don't waste time so make we can make the video shorter the message of Allah said Allah the mighty etc Muhammad supposedly he went to the seven heaven in the top of a flying mule which is a fiction story stupid story who in the world want to believe in that and you notice Muhammad when in his way to the seven heaven he never described anything like he saw the space is empty I mean he's talking about a, a, a mule flying but he's flying in the earth so Allah he gave him 50 prayer Allah gave him how many 50 Muhammad continues saying that when he was going down in the heaven, he met with Moses. First of all, Islam believe, and I challenge any Muslim to tell me this is not true, that all the prophets are still dead until now, and the first one to be resurrected is Muhammad. So how Muhammad, he met Moses? How he met him? However, this is not really our important topic here. According to Muhammad, Allah gave Muhammad 50 prayer, as you see in the front of you. However, Moses, he met him in the way. And he said to him, what Allah gave you? Huh? Tell me. He said, well, I enjoyed 50 prayer. 
Musa said to him go back to your Lord the mighty and ask him and tell him that your nation cannot do that Muhammad he went back to Allah and he told Allah to reduce the prayer as Moses advised him now you notice here the Muslim don't claim that Muhammad he spoke to Allah but how this communication happened nobody knows according to Muslims nowhere Muhammad he spoke even once to Allah but how he told him how Allah he told him we do not know it's a mystery but they agree all of them that Muhammad never spoke to Allah never met Allah never saw Allah Musa told him uh, after he came back he said to him well what happened he told him well he made it for me uh, you know uh, he gave me a like a like a, a discount and what the discount so he keep going backward forward like 50 uh, 45 40 30 35 25 10 and then finally Allah he made them five prayer Muhammad here is saying that the impact or the prayer numbers according to Islam is something was by the advice of Moses so he just admitting that he took that from the Jews otherwise why Moses why did not say Isa why he did not say you remember uh, uh, according to Muhammad he said that there is no prophet between me and the Isa which is wrong because the Quran proved Muhammad to be a liar because Muhammad himself he mentioned that there's a three messengers Allah he sent and those are the messengers of Isa and one of them is Paul which in Arabic we call him Boros and the Muslim they keep calling Boros names but all Islamic scholars they agree that the third prophet who was sent by Isa is Paulus and that proven that Isa cannot be as Muslims claim he's a prophet which is Jesus supposedly he must be God for no one can make a prophet a prophet save God so how Jesus can send somebody and say to him you are my prophet and you are my messenger to that nation so here we will see and this is a sahih hadith that this story is coming from authentic source Muhammad admitting that he got his five prayer from the Jews it was Musa's idea and Musa is the one who approved the five prayer Muhammad he go backward forward backward forward and he is the one Musa is the one who came with the idea of final agreement is five it was a Jewish thing if we go to the hadith we will find the following I hear this website they have this thing here keep appearing in our way <clears throat> if we go in this hadith here we will find this there is something the Muslims believe in it's called the punishment of the grave a Jewish woman entered into me and said the treatment of the grave is because of a urine who is the one who's saying that a Jewish woman I said who Aisha remember the one is talking here is Aisha Aisha she said you are lying Aisha should not believe in this stupid thing this is cannot be true I mean, you see, Aisha, maybe she is a kid, but she is not stupid. She said to her, you are lying. What is that? I mean, this is stupid. She said, no, it is true. We cut our skin and the clothed because of it. I want you to remember this because this is, is going to lead us to different hadith and different story Muhammad believe in. Because of it, the Messenger of Allah went out to pay uh, to pray and our voice become lo became loud which means those they are fighting over it he said what is this so I told him what this woman she said he said she spoke the truth Muhammad he agreed with the Jewish woman but this is not the important really in this story because until now there's no proof that Muhammad he learned that from the Jew but if you go a little bit in the story you will see Aisha saying after that I never saw the prophet praying but he say I seek refuge from the punishment in every prayer never offer a prayer without saying I seek refuge from the punishment of the grave <clears throat> as you see it
Here you notice that Aisha, the wife of Muhammad, who witnessed Muhammad praying, anytime he prays, supposedly, she is his wife. She is a person who stay with him in the house. So there's nothing hiding from her. She never heard Muhammad saying that statement about seeking refuge from the punishment of the grave. How come today, it was the first day Muhammad, he starts saying that prayer, that I seek refuge from the punishment of the grave. Because Muhammad, he heard the Jewish women, and since then, he never stopped saying that. Before, he never mentioned it. If it is so important to mention in the end of every prayer, as you see, he never, never pray without saying it. But this is after the Jewish women she came. If it is so important that we need to say it every time we pray, how come Muhammad never mentioned it? Because simply, he is copying from A to Z from somebody else, in this case, from the Jews. As they said in the Dean show, <clears throat> I apologize, my voice is, is, is tired. So he copied everything, nothing he have. The only verses Muhammad he have or teaching is about his sexuality. Like Allah, he gave him an order to sleep with all women. Allah gave him order that a woman she can give herself. Allah gave him order to give money. This is his own fabrication. The rest is copying from somebody. Some from the Christians, some from the Sabia, some from the Jews, everything. And in the Dean show, they 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 approve that to us. They say from A to Z, Islam is copying from the Jews. Now here, we mentioned in the beginning, we said, if you remember, that the story in front of us, that the Jewish woman, she said that the punishment of the grave is from the urine. From the urine. Do you see it? So here the Jewish woman, she mentioned two things. She mentioned the, the punishment of the grave, which Muhammad never spoke of before. And the Jewish women, she mentioned that the reason for the punishment of the grave is the urine. I mean, this is silly and stupid. Who in the world want to believe in this garbage? And Aisha, when the Jewish woman, she said that, she said to her, you are lying, which means Aisha, she never heard both things. About lying, about uh, uh, urine will cause punishment of the grave and the punishment of the grave. And then you will find right away after that, Muhammad, he starts spreading the news that urine will cause a punishment in the grave. <laughs> Muhammad said, urination is the main cause of the punishment of the grave. It's authentic. Have, I mean, how you can explain that to me? Except that Muhammad is nothing but a thief. He heard the Jews just a second ago. He liked the idea. He adopted the idea. And now it became of his religion. This man, whatever the Jews they say, he take them for granted because he knew that those people knows about God better than him. He's, he's a fake man, but this woman, she is just saying stupid things. The Jews, they have a lot of stupid things coming from fictions and legions and etc. Like Suleiman spoke to the ant as an example in the Quran. Tons of his stories in the Quran is coming from the legion of the Jews. So this is, I mean, we are just giving you examples. The ring of Suleiman, the flying carpet of Suleiman, the ant speaking to Suleiman, the genie of Suleiman. The flying horse of Suleiman, all those stuff in the Quran is coming from the Jews. And here Muhammad, he adopted the story of the, of the urine, and now he is teaching wherever he go that urine is the reason for punishment of the grave. How in the world somebody can say such a thing? You see, when you are a fake prophet and you copy a stupid lie, that will get you busted. Muhammad, when he got copying the Jews, saying what she said, this naive woman who believe in fairy tale stories, if this story is true, as Muslims they say, Muhammad, he got himself busted and he exposed himself. How you are a messenger of God and you believe in such a garbage story? A man of God? will not believe in such a stupid thing.
the story of a Dajjal Muhammad he got it from the Christians the Antichrist <laughs> the story of the seven sleepers Muhammad he got it from the Christians this is a fiction story the seven sleepers you can search it in the internet The Seven Sleepers is very famous a story written by a Christian bishop from Syria. It's just to encourage the Christians who they are under discrimination that don't worry, we will be victorious. It's a fiction story. Muhammad, he copied the story, he put it in the Quran, and he claimed that Allah is the one is speaking about those youth Christians. So Muhammad, because he's a false prophet, he copied whatever coming his way. It doesn't matter what is in the way. Muhammad, he chew it. The story of Suleiman, the story of Luqman, the story of Moses going in the fountain of youth, the story of Al Khadr who drank from the fountain of youth and he will never die. This is why he always a green. Actually, Al Khadr mean Mr. Green. Why he is Mr. Green? Because he drank from the fountain of youth. When Muhammad he got those stories, all of them they are copy. If you go and read the story of this the, the seven sleepers, you will see how much similar, except that Muhammad and the Muslims they thought the word Kali Ahom is Kalbahom. So the Quran says, and they have a dog with them. The fact it says Kali Ahom, not Kalbahom. Even in many Islamic interpretations, they say it is not Kalbahom. But there is an error in the scribe, which means when they wrote the Quran, instead of writing Kali Ahom as it is in the Christian story, they said Kalbahom. Because all of us we knew that in Islam the dog is dirty. So what Allah is saying that the dog with those Christians? It was an angel who is called Kali Ahom, which means their provider. If you go just to give you more examples of Muhammad copying from the Jews and copying from fairy tales around him, not necessarily just the Jews, everybody. If you go here, let us see. Look at this story. Look at this story and the madness and the stupidity of this false prophet. Muhammad, remember, he claimed to be a prophet. How a prophet of God he would say such a thing. This is a strong hadith. This is not a shish kebab week. This is Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 3400. And I can find you the same stories in many books. You will see here, speaking about a guy, his name is Al-Khadr, who drank from the fountain of youth. And this man, who Allah sent him, Send Moses to him to learn from him wisdom. And you will see right away how the name of Moses appear in the story. Moses thought that he is the most person who knows. Knows about what? About the teaching of Allah. A person asked him, are you the most knowledgeable? He said, yes. Allah said to Moses, no. You are not the most lear learned. You are not. Musa, he said, who is no more knowledgeable than me? He said, our slave, the Khadr, is more learned than you. Musa, he said, how I can meet him? And then the story continue, and you will see a very funny, stupid story about Musa, Allah told him to take a fish with him, as the Quran story says. And when you lose the fish, because the fish will come back to life. Why the fish will come back to life? Because the fish will drink from the fountain of youth and come back to life. Because this is the fountain. Whoever drank from it, he come back to life. You see the story? <laughs> and then Musa's, the fish escape and run in the water. And the fish, when it goes in the water, it makes the water like a rock. So they can trace and walk in the top of the water. Imagine, Musa is walking in the top of the water. And then when they arrive in the middle of the ocean, they found a guy, his name is Al-Khadr. He is in the middle of the ocean. 
just staying there. You see, it says they follow the, the the traces of the fish in the ocean. Have you ever heard of somebody following a trace of a fish in the ocean? How in the world we can follow a trace of a fish in the ocean? Why? Because the ocean turned like a rock, solid rock, wherever the fish go. So they just walk. They did not even take a boat. They were walking in the ocean. All those stories Muhammad is copying from people around him, mixed with the legion of the Jews. The story of Al Khadr is a story the Jews they learned when they were captured in Iraq by the Assyrian. In Iraq and in the Persia, there is a very well known uh, uh, story about a guy, his name Gilgamesh, and about a guy who his name is Al Khadr. Who searched for you know like you know searching for life and fountain of life and this story is exist in many uh, uh, cultures actually the 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 movie which is movie is you know exists today uh, the Caribbean uh, you know the part of the Caribbean you will see there they are speaking about the fountain of youth this is how much this story spread all over the same as the flying horse of Suleiman. If you remember when Muhammad he entered upon Aisha and he said to her, What is that? She was playing with dolls. He said to her, What is that? And he saw between between the dolls, he saw a horse have two wings. Okay. Let us see. Here we go. Muhammad, he said to Aisha, when she was playing with her dolls, the prophet who married a child, he moved the curtain and he said, what is this? She said, she did not say actually my doll. She said, Banati, which means my daughter. Among them, he saw a horse with wings made of rags. This is what Muhammad started teaching the Muslims. Look what this happened here. Aisha is a child. Aisha is a child. And Muhammad, Aisha here is, by the way, she is at the age of 14, not exactly like a little baby as before when he married her. So now she is getting into the youth age. She's 14. And ask, what is this? I see among them. She replied, a horse. He said, what is that? It has on it. She replied, two wings. Muhammad, he said, and here, read carefully with me what happened here. This is extremely important. He said to her, what is that? What is that in there? Like, okay, it's a horse. She said, yes, horse. What is that? He said, she said, a horse with wings. He said, a horse with two wings? Muhammad himself, he is wondering what? She replied, haven't you heard that Solomon had the horses with wings? And Muhammad, in the moment, he laughed until his teeth came out. He found it funny and stupid, but later Muhammad, he adopted the story. <laughs> and he told the story. And this is where he learned the story from a child. The child Aisha, she learned from the Jews that Suleiman, he have obviously she play, she play with the Jewish children. That Suleiman, he have a flying horse, have have wings. He copied the story, he told the story, he spread the story. That what Islam is about. One more thing before we finish this video, so you guys you can download it. Once Muhammad he was praying in the funeral, and we can show you verses from the Quran, by the way, all approve what we're saying. Muhammad was praying in the funeral. Read carefully with me. The Messenger of Allah used to pray, stand up in a funeral until the crops is buried. I learned Jews, what happened here? I learned Jews, which mean a rabbi. Once passed by him and said, 
this is how we do it the prophet sat down and said act differently from them and this is a very clear proof that Muhammad is a false prophet if the prayer of Islam is coming from Allah why in the world Muhammad he will change it in a second just because a Jew he said to him this is how we do it do you understand if I am a prophet of God and now I'm teaching you how to pray where Muhammad is getting how to pray supposedly the Muslim they say that Jibreel he taught him okay so Jibreel taught him that he should stand in the prayer when he pray in the funeral a Jewish is walking by and he just said this is how we do it so what the problem with Muhammad why he is asking the Muslims ordering them to act differently and he sat down immediately read carefully here the message of Allah used to stand up during the funeral prayer used which mean all the time for a long time he never changed it until a Jewish guy he said to him this is how we do it how you are claiming that you are a person everything you do is coming from Allah even the prayer is inspiration from Allah how to put your hand is, is everything the Muslim do is supposedly is Allah taught Adam, taught Muhammad through the angels Jibreel how to do it and now you are changing the prayer for the sake of a Jew saying this is how we do it so yes we agree that Muhammad is a person as a fraud he copy from others nothing of Islam is his own the Kaaba is the Arab pagan his parents they kiss the black stone before the black stone before him they go between as Safa and Marwa Muhammad he said when when his followers they thought he is going to demolish as Safa and Marwa this he said to them uh, uh, no 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 as Safa and Marwa is a from the ritual of Allah why the Safa and Marwa from the ritual of Allah how is that this is the ritual of the pagans Muhammad he have to make a verse about it to be sure that the Muslims they will follow the tradition of the Arab pagans as we see in chapter 2 verse 158 if you read the interpretation you will see that they say to him why we want to we hate to do a Safa and Marwa he don't want they don't want to do it but Muhammad forced them to do it because the whole point he want to say to the Arab I am not against you you as a pagan here we go you like the Kaaba I like the Kaaba you kiss the black stone I kiss the black stone you go to a Safa and Marwa I go to the Safa and Marwa and not only that you know what I am going to make it as a part of the ritual of Allah but this is was the shrine of the, the pagans the same as the Kaaba was the shrine of the pagans the same as the black stone was the black stone of the pagans Islam is nothing my friend except a copy even the word Islam is coming from the guy who his name is Muslim who the Muslim call him Muslim to make fun of him the word of Rahman Muhammad he copied from that guy this guy he claimed to be Rahman and his, his God is Rahman he is a Rahman and his God is Rahman Muhammad he never said the word Rahman until he he received a letter from this guy saying in the name of a Rahman so Muhammad right away he liked the name and he added to his book to his Quran and then he said when the Arab they said to him who's a Rahman who's a Rahman he never mentioned the word Rahman before never what happened today so the the, the Arab they said to him so you do you Muhammad do you have a new God we thought you you know worship Allah and now you are saying a Rahman who is a Rahman is that Rahman or Yamama even they mentioned to him that this is the Rahman of Al-Yamama the only Rahman we know is the guy who his name is Musaylama the Muslim they call him Musaylama Muslim and he is Rahman Al-Yamama so look what Muhammad he said to them as an answer in the Quran chapter 17 verse 110 he said say call him call upon Allah which means I name him Allah or I call him our Rahman by whatever name you call upon him it doesn't matter all the beautiful names belong to Allah he liked the name <laughs> but this is a problem here because this is the chapter is almost more the half of the Quran Muhammad received already so Muhammad received half of the Quran and yet he never mentioned the word Rahman so why the Muslims they have from the beginning of the Quran in every every chapter Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim 
that means this is something added later because as you see this is the first time Muhammad Quran Rahman after he named or he received sorry a letter from this guy who is named Muslim he copied it he like it he added and he like he said look all the good names are belong to Allah this is not the name of his God but he like it all good names why he is saying this why Muhammad is saying this because the, because the Arab they said to him but this is the name of the God of that that guy do you worship his God now and Muhammad is an enemy to him their competition about who is who is the prophet that guy he came up to be a prophet and Muhammad claimed to be a prophet and suddenly Muhammad is naming his God as Rahman so thank you the Dean show for proving to us that Islam is a stupid religion cult everything there is a copy shaitan rub himself around the penis of the man even the versions in the heaven it is coming from the persian stories he learned it from salman al farisi the the bridge over the, over, over over the heaven the flying horse of Suleiman, the ring of Suleiman, the talking ants the seven sleepers the punishment of the grave the 50 prayer the five prayer the fast of Ramadan, which he took from the Sabi and everything, even Ashura. Who's where is Ashura from? Where is Ashura? Why why Muhammad is was used to uh, uh, fast Ashura? <laughs> you know why why you why you fast Ashura? If you go and see the story of Ashura, you will see Muhammad. He was just copying for the sake of copying, and he is not ashamed of it. Let us see. Read carefully. Uh, I want to show you where Muhammad he got that from the Jews. And Muhammad he claimed that if you fast the day of Ashura, it is going to forgive all the sin of the last year. You know? Let us see. In different hadith, they say that Ashura uh, it was a pagan uh, uh, fasting. Read it, like here. Ashura was the day that the Quraysh used to fast during the Jahiliya. <laughs> so, if this is a fasting of Ashura for the pagans, why Muhammad was fasting it, and why he ordered the Muslims to fast it? One hadith it says that this is the day of the Jahiliya, which means the Arab before Islam, pre-Islamic era, and different hadith says that this is, was a day for the Jews. Even Ashura is a copy. Whatever story you want to believe in Muslims, you believe in this hadith where it says that he was copying from Quraysh, which is a pagan tribe. I mean, why Muhammad is taking the, the, the fasting of Quraysh and they are pagans? They are fasting for what? According to which teaching? Hmm? Everything in this religion is a false religion. Everything. He have nothing of his own. I hope we cover the topic. Please feel free to download the video, share it with your friends, and I hope tomorrow we will have a live podcast. God is willing if I can. And until I see you then, may the Lord bless you and take care of you all. Christ is Lord. Islam is false, and I mean to that. See you soon. And don't forget, if you like to learn more about Islam, you can go and search in Amazon.com. Just type my name, Christian Prince, and you will find a list of my books if you are interested to learn and get handy reference in your hands. Thank you, and God bless.